Before we start, let me quickly just say that you can get the full Construct 3 source project and the full game by supporting me on my Patreon page. Hello and welcome to another episode of Runes of Ariel, the devlog. We're working towards uh, version alpha 1 and in this episode I want to walk you through the entire project, the layout of the project and what is contained in it. Um, so you can have a better understanding of uh, the construction of uh, the game itself and in later videos we will go further in detail on uh, the different layouts and um, event sheets and all other stuff that's needed to get towards uh, the live coding sessions and uh, version alpha 1. So this is uh, the project really and um, let's make this a bit bigger and you can see I already have a vast number of layouts the most important layout by far is this uh, battle layout you're viewing right now so this is the actual uh, battle layout and this is where the actual battle will happen and as you can see there's already uh, lots and lots of stuff on here uh, we'll go back into further detail, exact further detail, uh, later on in later videos to see how it all fits together. Um, then there's uh, the sandbox layout here. Um, this is a pretty extensive layout, uh, which we'll actually only be using in debugging. So uh, also uh, only in versions uh, alpha and beta and release version, uh, this won't be in there because it's really to test all of the logic and all of the battle logic without having to complete the game like a hundred times to have all of the possible combinations of uh, events that might be happening inside a battle. So we'll come back to that in further detail later on as well. I've already created a, an extra layout where we can select a character. Character creation uh, or selection is actually already something that's part of uh, the layout. So uh, let me demonstrate that. So I've demonstrated the main, main menu before, which is uh, in, in an earlier video, which is also a separate layout. Um, let me just start that for you. So here we are. This is the uh, the main layout. Uh, the main menu actually and if we start the journey and we uh, select one of these uh, difficulties uh, we can choose a character Achilles was a prodigy child left on the doorsteps of the Kashan monastery where he was taught the learnings of master Azimuth he perfected the incarnations of Belzebub granting him great power over attacking spells so uh, I just let the narrator uh, do its thing because otherwise it would be very confusing to hear my voice in between but here you can see that you can select some character have some hints here you see as an eight artifact um, you can just scroll through the characters here and uh, eventually start your journey uh, once you complete your uh, character uh, so we we need some extra dlc here to be able to go back stuff like that so uh that's the the um the character selection here and later on we will have a live coding session where we adjust the character selection screen actually to uh, to have to uphold also an interface where the user can upgrade its character uh, by exchanging experience the user will be able to uh, upgrade the character uh, extra attack extra defense extra intelligence and stuff like that um, also using a, a variant of that character selecting screen but instead of making a new layout uh, we will be adapting that character selection layout uh, in further detail so there's playfab and uh, for a distant future we want to also uh, include the playfab um, technology but th that's still on the roadmap and i've been doing some small experiments with it which is probably going to work uh, but that's for uh, future developments there's also the card management which will come uh, to into further detail uh, later on in later videos where you will be seeing how uh, the card management uh, will happen and let me just uh, start that here as well and there you can see we can add cards to the equipped cards and we can delete them off again so in later videos we'll be seeing how that exactly works 
And we have a, uh, a small variant on this where we do the same thing, more or less approximately, using artifacts. So you can add artifacts to the equipped artifacts right here. So also in later videos, we'll be seeing how this exactly works. There's already a screen or a layout where you see that you were defeated. And there's also uh, an inventory, which is part of a later code along session uh, where uh, we'll be seeing how this is being created. Um, also, as you remember, the uh, the idea of the entire game is to have a map where the user can go along and uh, choose his path towards the end of an island and go from island to island collecting runes. Um, let me show you how that looks like by just starting the game again and picking in a new journey. You can see that this is an actual map and we can go towards the next step and then we can start a battle. There's still a lot of work to do here uh, on, on this uh, screen because we want to make all of these missions, all of those battles uh, randomized and within uh, a generic framework. And those are things we're going to do in later uh, sessions. Uh, because that will be quite a lot of work. Uh, so that's for the islands. And also you can go towards cities. You can see an island at work, for example. Let's hide the mission details. This is an island with all of the spots here, uh, all of the points being available. Like that. All of those points being available. And I'll express in further detail uh, how that uh, actually works. Um, and we also have cities where you can go to and have some further details and see uh, where you can go in those different cities. With some lore, some points also, uh, always a different kind of city. We'll see in detail how this is created also, how we can create a new city and stuff like that. That's uh, all part of a future uh, video. Stay with me, bear with me. And the last uh, layout you can see here is the stuff layout. And those are all like um, objects, object types that are not in any uh, in any layout yet, which are spawned uh, at runtime. Um, for example, in the stuff, which is really a garbage bin. <laughs> it's It's got all of the enemies here. You can see the enemies. Um, it's got uh, some text, it's got some loot, it's got a lot of, a lot of stuff that we will be using uh, later on and that is not uh, generally in, in the game yet, it's spawned at runtime. Enemies, for example, are spawned when uh, the game starts, loot is spawned, uh, spawned when the game ends and stuff like that. So all of that stuff is on the layout called stuff. And all of the other stuff has uh, its own dedicated layout, like effects can be found here on this layout. Uh, the individual cards are here on this layout. So at the moment, uh, only these cards have been implemented yet. So there's a lot of stuff to do in later videos where we're all going to be implementing those individual cards and I'm all going to make a video about that. So stick with me, uh, Some uh, lots of nice cards coming. Uh, some preview uh, things. Um, here we are. So there's only four scrolls right now, but in later videos we're going to be creating a lot more types of scrolls. Uh, and uh, we'll be placing them here and configuring them here and seeing how they work in uh, real uh, life. And then there are already, uh, I believe, 13 artifacts. They all already work and they are implemented because they do a lot of stuff and I've tested them before. Uh, you'll be seeing separate videos here on all of the artifacts of what they do and how they are implemented and how you can test them really. And uh, during the course of the development, we'll go along and code live new artifacts. I uh, also would like to hear from you in the comments of the videos if you have nice ideas on having some kind of artifact in the game and consider adding it there, of course. And in the crafting, you can see there there's already some stuff that can be found along the journey and which will be used to create scrolls, for example, or other things using recipes inside the spellbook. So 
in in terms of crafting not a lot of things have been done yet uh to be honest um and those are all things that's going to be happening in live coding sessions along the way towards version alpha one <coughs> So in terms of event sheets, there are already quite some event sheets. Uh, um, I haven't had the the idea yet to make them all uh, nicely structured in folders. Uh, but anyhow, maybe in a later phase we'll be doing that. And a lot of them are really structured in terms of logic. That means that everything uh, in terms of AI, which is not really a lot <laughs> right now, it's the AI of the of the enemies is not really smart. It's going to be in here, some uh, things with animations here, um, everything to do with the layout of artifact management, of the some functions and animations in the battle itself, a battle menu which will be coming back later on, uh, some info about cards and how cards should be working, and also the card management interface for the character selection interface. And then there's two very important event sheets for the command queue, which I'll be coming back to uh, soon in a later video, and all of the functions, uh, which is equally important. A separate both for debug uh, stuff, uh, one for attack management, one for the defeat, one for a dialogue, one especially for effects, one pertaining to enemies, um, for the game layout itself, for uh, the for an island, generic island, because if you create extra islands, uh, the look of the island will be different, of course, and the points on the island will be different, but uh, obviously the, the event sheet will be exactly the same, so that's why I call it a uh, generic island. Uh, stuff for the hint, stuff for interaction into the screen, stuff for the inventory, stuff for logic, stuff for loot, main menu, uh, uh, as an, an end battle menu uh, for messaging, uh, play fab for randomization for the sandbox to save and load stuff uh, scrolls itself uh, settings sound the splash screen uh, statistics and variables so there's a lot of uh, stuff going on here uh, which we'll all be coming back into detail uh, later on so the object types i'm not going to go over all of the bloody object types because that's a lot of things to cover and they'll be covered in later videos but do know that they are nicely structured in in in, in uh, separate uh, folders uh, the individual cards can be found the uh, background stuff can be found data itself can be found uh, for the maps for the menu and all of the things here are separate in separate folders. There's a lot of things going on here. Um, and also to make uh, the coding more easy, we've also created uh, different families. They all have their use, uh, those families, because in code they will uh, have a similar behavior. And you will see that cards uh, families have these uh, instance variables and behaviors. Uh, characters will have uh, other uh, behaviors and instance variables. Loot will also have other uh, stuff. So we'll be coming back to those uh, in detail when we explain all uh, different parts of uh, the game uh, later on. There's already a lot of sounds in there. Uh, we'll come back to there uh, how we uh, how we import sounds, how we use them, how we structure them, in a later video. We'll also uh, uh, see how we create those narrator uh, narrator voices actually uh, there's some music in there there's the video for the splash um, uh, the fonts we're using and of course uh, some JSON files and those JSON files are pretty important because they look all, uh, they, they, could, they have a lot of configurable information uh, for combat uh, for configuration for uh, decks for the heroes, for individual missions, for states, and for tips. So we'll come back to those uh, things later in later videos, but that's pretty important. And as the game grows, as the content of the game grows, these configurations will also be increasing. Some of the configurations like uh, deck definitions or state definitions, actually uh, only used in debugging mode but they are equally important because they they provide us with the possibility to have all of the possibilities checked when debugging the entire game so that's uh, that's very important when you create a larger game that um, 
it's easy to debug it's easy to play uh, because that's a, a lot of quality of life in, in, in the games is held down by uh, not testing enough and not going about uh, com uh, um, testing all of the combinations that game is possible of and uh, certainly in a game with the complexity of this one there's a lot of combinations lots of possibilities to uh, encompass the replayability of, of the game and uh, hence there are also a lot of things to test yeah. so um, that's about it that's uh, the structure of of the project um, we'll continue in next videos to go in detail over the different stuff that you've seen uh, right now so as always please like please subscribe and if you want the full source code of uh, this game you can uh, support me on patreon the link is in the description goodbye